everyone. Welcome to another episode of Quantum GK. This will be our last episode for this year. And we have a very special guest. He is a, a private wealth advisor at Goldman Sachs ICO. Um, he, he graduated with a bachelor's degree in business administration from the, the University of California, Riverside, and um, got his MBA from the University of California, Irvine. He's married with three children, 10, seven, and two, quite busy, right? And um, Filipino, born in uh, California. So please welcome Mr. Mark Lakin. And I hope I pronounced your, your last name right, Mark. Hey, Donna. Thanks for having me. And that's, it's, it's pronounced correctly. You got it. Thank All you. right. Okay. Because sometimes other people will pronounce it as Laquin. But I know you're Filipino. It's got to be Laquin. Yeah. Right? yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Well, so I'm super excited to have you uh, as our last guest for to cap our um, Quantum GK this, uh, this year. And um, because I know there's a special story that, you know, we're all looking forward for you to share with us about your visit to um, one of the GK villages in the Philippines. But before we get to, to that, I, I want, you, I want um, people to know a little bit more about you. It is our first time to meet and virtually for now. Uh, like I said earlier, before we, we uh, you know, went live, I really look forward to meeting you in person. But just a little bit about you. Um, you said you were born here in, I mean, not in the U.S., right? But in California. So both of your parents are, are Filipino? Yeah, both are Filipino. I was born here in Southern California in the Los Angeles area. Um, um, raised by my mom. So she was a single mother, only child. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's born and raised in Southern California. All right, and your mom is from what part of the Philippines? Uh, she is from, she is from Guadalupe near Makati, and oh, my, my my dad is from um, Pampanga. Oh, okay. So I mentioned earlier before we went live. Yeah. I'm Pampanga. I'm full blooded. Kapampanga. Yay! Hello, mga kabalit. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So I, I actually also lived close to Guadalupe when um, when my husband and I lived there. Moved back to the Philippines about two and a half years, and then came back. We lived on. Close to Shaw Boulevard, so I know exactly where Guadalupe is. So that's awesome. All right. So, and I know, um, you know, being in California, right? Uh, growing up in California, obviously, there's a lot of Filipinos there. It has the it has the most population of Filipinos, right? Um, in California. So, was it? Have you always been in touch with your Filipino heritage? Um, you know, like were you involved in any Filipino organizations? Maybe when you were in a student or something when you were younger? Interesting. So in the area of LA I grew up in, it was a very Hispanic heavy population, right? So there are few Filipinos, a good amount, but I would say I probably got more in touch with the history and the culture when I did go to college, when I was surrounded by a lot more Filipinos, um, kids my age trying to understand kind of the heritage where we would join groups and clubs where we'd learn a lot more of kind of what's going on, the, the, the issues going on currently his, in the Philippines, what we can do to help here. So, um, yeah, I would say it was a progression throughout my adult life, learning more about Fil Filipinos and the culture. So when did you know about Gawad Kalinga and how did you become involved? Uh, interesting enough, interestingly enough, um, just through Google, I think it, I think a lot of it sparked with an interest of how can I help, right? You kind of, where do I start? Well, I know there's organizations everywhere. Um, I knew one of, uh, my goals and I, I knew I wanted to kind of help there in, in the Philippines, help build something, create something, something that can last versus just sending, sending money. Um, so just did some Google searches. I knew that I, I wanted to get involved in building something. And then when I came across um, GK and saw that they actually have a program of building homes and villages, um, that really intrigued me. All right. So I kind of started with how can I kind of just get my hands dirty? Maybe I just show up and volunteer. That's That was a lot of my first initial how can I help is I would love to volunteer. 
Um, but with again, with family, career, kids, finding a lot of time to to volunteer and take time off and things like that, it was a challenge. So I think GK's program and as I just kind of got deeper into it, um, just really sparked that interest. And I said, I, I, this actually works for me. And a lot of credit to uh, Marcel, who who really was patient with me again with some with helping build homes thousands and thousands of miles away i don't want to hope you know what you're getting into and how it can help and how does it help those individuals so shout out to her for being really patient with me and helping me understand the process and uh educating me on on gk so she was she was definitely my my ambassador and you were referring to marisol villanueva of course that's correct. Okay, so just so for people who may not, you know, know, I mean, obviously, who doesn't know Maricel Villanueva, right? Well, for those of you who are new to GK, uh, Maricel Villanueva was our former executive director, and our new executive director now is uh, Ita Carol uh, Tulud. But yeah, Maricel has been instrumental in really, you know, um, bringing a lot of, you know, partners and advocates into um, Gawad Kuninga USA, which of course, you know, mobilized resources to support the Gawad Kuninga programs, right? But um, what triggered you Googling about, I mean, were you, I mean, of course, if you didn't know about Gawad Kuninga, you wouldn't like literally type Gawad Kuninga on the search <laughs> box, right? So, but what triggered, what were you, what were you searching for? What were you looking for when you, when you stumbled upon GK? Uh, 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 definitely a life event occurred. So in 2019, my mom passed away from cancer, from breast cancer. Um, yeah. So definitely going going through kind of a a kind of a spiritual journey of I want her to her legacy to continue things like that. I wanted to continue uh, uh, carrying her torch. She was a very uh, a selfless person. Always wanted to help especially as a single mother, again, we went, we empathize, right? So we went through a lot of our own struggles, especially when it came to having a home and things like that. So again, it, the, what kind of sparked it was, how can I help? I know she would want to help. She always, I uh, always catch comments of whenever we hear something, um, uh, some tragedy or people who need help, she would always say, I wish I could help them. And she would, she would always find ways to, help whether if it's just her time helping being a physical body just to help around when people are in need so it was kind of in that moment where I was looking how can I help in a bigger way I think uh what she kind of raised me to be or kind of what inspired me was we're all going through this journey and and if I can help as many people as I can through this journey of life it's mm -hmm. it's I can look back and say um yeah i think i i was helpful to people and i can kind of uh, be happy with what what i accomplished and when you were looking for an organization to to you know to um um continue your mom's legacy as you uh, you were describing were you looking for an organization specifically based in the philippines or did you consider you know, local or organization, nonprofits that's, that are based here in the U.S.? You know what? My heart always brings me back to the Philippines. It's, it's I'm, I'm maybe Filipinos understand it and Filipinos here in the U.S. understand there's definitely plenty of people who need our, need our help here. Um, but when I think about my mom and I think about who we want to help, it, it always comes back to the Philippines and knowing the people there we would love to help. It just, that's where our heart is for a lot of the time. Um, um, but it was also kind of going through the program itself and seeing the difference between, again, just throwing out different organizations, a, a habitat for humanity, because that's where maybe pe first people would think of how can I help build a home? But you're, it's not the same. It's, you're not going to know the people who get to own the home, who who are going to be receiving it. And GK was completely different than anything I ever found. So it was, you'll know the people, they'll get to know you. Um, um, you get to name your homes and your village so that there's always this connection. So the fact that they want the donor to be an integral part of 
this process and and their lives to me that was that was like nothing I've ever found and okay so I told you I'm, I'm curious I am a basically curious person so break it down for me you went so you you know you wanted to honor your mom went ahead and you know went to Google and so what was were you like literally think you know like did you Google like Filipino or get nonprofits, NGOs or something like that? How did you go about that whole process? Or did you know, you didn't know Marisol before the Google search, did no. you? Okay. All right. So how was that whole process like? It, it was kind of just normal Google searches of uh, Filipino charities or then kind of going down the rabbit hole to how do I help? build a well or in the philippines or what what do they need and then it kind of went down to uh how can i build a home for someone how can i donate how can i help build a home and then it kind of brought me to help build a village and i was like wow i can help a lot of people if i built a village versus one home or um, um something like that so it just kept getting bigger and bigger and the ideas and inspiration was just kind of what got me interested in, and and a lot of it kept coming back to GK. And then did because you just I, message GK, like sent you went to the website and click contact and stuff like that? Yeah, and it was uh, interesting enough. So I saw the contact and uh, Maricel is in Orange County and I'm in Orange, I live in Orange County. So yes. said, I just emailed her and said, oh, I'm interested in this build a village concept that you guys have. And she said, yeah, let's meet. Let me tell you more about it. And after that, it was meetings after meetings and uh, conversations to help me understand the process. So it was really, it really took off when they said, yeah, let's talk and meet. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. And actually, we have Tito Charlie Kapati, Dr. Charlie Kapati, who's our chairman, current chairman of Gawad uh, Kalinga USA, watching. He says good evening to both of us. And I'm pretty sure that excites him too. And that's the reason why I ask it because, you know, obviously we want to learn from, you know, from people who are supporting um, Gawad Kalinga who are already advocates and, you know, and um, donors and, and, and see how we can spread the word about our advocacy for the poor, you know, in the Philippines. And so this is very helpful for us too and see how we can, you know, we can get more people like you to look into our work for the poor and obviously the more advocates and the more support we get you know the more families will be able to help right okay so now let's talk about your village it's called the gk veronica village is that right that's correct it's it's it's, it's in um gut bulacan also yep. it's in enchanted farm itself. that's correct Oh wow! Okay, so how did that? How did that go about? That's really a special, special place, right? I mean, enchanted farm. The name itself, right? It's enchanting. It really is. I was telling you earlier um, that I saw it from the time when it was all dirt and it was so difficult to even get, you know, get to the village at that time. There wasn't really there were homes yet. Actually, when when we first my my husband and I first visited, and this was in 2010. 2010 and so now you have a village there so tell us more about it yeah it was it was great so they um maricel dan luis they kind of they came to me and they asked me we, we 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 know your story and we know you're looking for a village so we're in the process of finding a location we looked at pampanga we looked in uh, other areas but they came back and they said you know what there's a special place we think we we, we want to build your village and um, um, and they told me about the Enchanted Farm. They told me about kind of what it is. And the way I kind of, if I were to describe it is it's, we know we want to help the poor. We know we want to end poverty. We know we want to, uh, strive for that. But what GK does very, very uniquely, and what I think they're trying to build is, again, help donors like me build something for the community that the community can actually use to um, create their own uh, economy and, 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 and build their own kind of support. So it's not just a reliance on donation. It's more of lending a helping hand, giving them the support and the infrastructure that they need so that they can kind of continue moving on forward with themselves. And that's what it felt like being there, looking at the farms, 
and then seeing where they make and sell peanut butter and they jar it, right? It's this kind of uh, process that you see and it starts to make sense. Me describing it doesn't really make sense, but when you're there, it just does. And it's like, okay, I see, I see what you're trying to do here. This person, I donate a village, a home, so people can feel one less thing they have to worry about. And then from there, they can focus on the agriculture, the, um, the crops and, and things like that and uh, the resources they have around themselves. So it was quite amazing when, when you actually get there and see it in person. Well, I'm sure. And But did you care where the village is going to be? I mean, you, you said that this was going, it was, it was a, a way to, for you to honor your mom and continue her legacy, right? Did you, was it important to you where it was going to be? Or, you know, or did you think wherever it's, you know, it's most needed at that time? Um, not so much. Not so much the location was too important. As, uh, what I think what my heart was telling me was where people need uh, needed help the most. I think that was going to be critical. Um, um, location would have been great if it was near, not too far from. If I were to visit, I'm not traveling 10 hours to get there that would have been nice so they they kind of knew I wanted to visit and, and be present so they they looked at areas close by that I can get to if I flew into Manila so um um but they told me the story of uh Enchanted Farm Enchanted Village and and I think that was enough for me awesome and so so this was what year was this when you when you started talking about building the village and, and things like that my first conversation with Marisol was in 2000, late 2019. So it's been a three years in the making and uh, COVID did slow down the process a bit because I couldn't get there during the whole yeah, yeah. quarantine. But as soon as it opened up, we, we, we went full, full steam ahead. And, you know, I mean, we mentioned that you have three, three kids, right? Yeah. Well, maybe the youngest wasn't even born then. Not anymore. Yeah, because they are 10, 7, and 2. So you do have your hands full, right? And where do you, where did you find the time and the, you know, the, I guess, how were you able to commit to something as big as building a village? You could have committed to maybe sending a scholar or like maybe, you know, or like, you know, getting involved in a, in, in a program that requires maybe much less commitment and, and, you know, and, you know, in terms of time and resources and all of that stuff. So what, um, I guess, what inspired you or motivated you to take on a big project such as building a village? Um, going back to kind of helping my mom continue her legacy, the idea of her name living forever really stuck with me. And that's really what I wanted. I think, uh, uh, I, for me, I'm more of an introvert. I don't care if the attention's on me, but um, knowing her name is going to live forever in that village, and that's their home, and that's what they put on when they when they write out write down their address. To me, it just kind of really uh, allowed me to con kind of continue continue her torch and have a legacy for her that will kind of continue forever. So the lasting idea, um, having your name associated with it, them knowing her and knowing her story. Um, was big for me. So that's what was important for me to go out there, tell her story so that they can and associate someone who's just like them, was able to give back, even though they didn't have too much. She didn't have so much. She was still able to find a way to give back through me. And, and what is your mom's story? So we keep, you know, I think maybe it's important for people to know your mom a little bit more, right? Because it is, it is in her honor that you, you know, built this village, right? So can you tell us a little bit more about your mom, and because we, we, you know, we keep referring to her, and really is the heart of, you know, of this, of, of, you know, of this village, right? And why you, you even thought about building it. So tell us a little bit about your mom and, and her story. Um, she was born uh, again, Guadalupe, uh, Philippines, nineteen forty-six. So she's, um, she came and immigrated to the U.S. I want to say when she was around 20, 26, 27, uh, had me a little later when she was in her, in her thirties, um, um, kind of settled here in Los Angeles, 
uh, doesn't have an interesting story. Really common story of immigrating. Had me um, shortly got divorced. So again, she was she was a single mom for most almost all my life. Um, um, really, no no major official education. So she kind of came to the U.S. with not a lot of uh, uh, education background that can give her a solid job. So she was pretty much working normal jobs, entry level jobs cleaning houses on the weekends. Um, again, her focus for me and raising a child was, again, we didn't live in the greatest areas in LA. So trying to get me into those Catholic schools where the nuns are taking care of you just to keep me out of, uh, keep me out of trouble was important. So uh, a, a lot of that's what stuck with me of kind of education and taking care of people. Um, but that was pre pretty much it. And then she kind of did everything she can to keep me in school, get me through college. And and if it's for talking about more of the charitable giving side, what I always remember was no matter how little it felt we had growing up, she was always finding ways to give more. So kind of giving that message of no matter how little you have, you can always give uh, to those in need. There's always someone who's probably hurting a little bit more than you who needs a little bit more than you type mentality well it's it's kind of funny you said it's a typical you know immigrant story but you know while you're you're telling her story i was just imagining how you know difficult it would it, you know must have been trying to you know raise a child and you know and working i mean i'd imagine so many hours la is not cheap right how, and even if even if you said you know you didn't live in the you know nicest neighborhoods, it's still expensive. It's much more expensive than Illinois. I know that for sure, right? And I mean, I can just imagine how you know how difficult it must have been for her to balance you know providing for you, putting food on the table, right? And also at the same time, um, you know, wanting to spend time with you, right? Making or again, you know, that, like you said, you, you stay out of trouble and all of that. Um, but it's amazing how, you know, she, she found it in her heart to, to share whatever, you know, whatever she could, you know, at that time. And what's, what's also to me is inspiring is that you talk about the neighborhood you, you grew up in, right? And, you know, in her putting it to Catholic, you know, schools, which again, is not cheap, right? <laughs> Doing that. But now you live in Orange County, right? Do you live in Orange County? Is that you, uh, you, you said you, you're from Orange County, right? Uh, and so is Ms. Marcel. And I know that area is a nice area. I really wanted to live there. I, you know, I thought I would move to California, specifically in Irvine. That was exactly the exact city that my husband and I were checking out when I, you know, I graduated. Um, I, grad I, I got my master's from the, University of Southern California. So right after that, I thought I could find a job, right? And I was just, you know, dreaming the California dream because I saw her and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so nice here. And so, you know, when as soon as we started checking out the apartments, you know, and, and we're like, oh my gosh, okay, so we probably, you know, will not be able to afford this if we don't, if I don't find a job in, in Irvine. So long story short, we ended up staying in Illinois, which is probably where God wanted us to be anyway, but I wanted to share that because that, you know, where, where you started when your mom was raised, you know, uh, you know, we're trying to raise a, you know, a, a son and making sure that, you know, like you said, he gets out of trouble, making sure that he, you know, that she provided the best for you to where you are now, right? Being a wealth advisor at Goldman Sachs, I'm pretty sure, you know, she's very proud of you for that. And, you know, and, now you're being you're able to not only provide for your own family right but also you know share your blessings to those who are you are who are in dire need who really are you know the, the marginalized and the disadvantaged right and so that's that is such an amazing story and now with you honoring her memory and her legacy you know with the gk veronica village you know it's just it's just amazing to me i'm pretty sure all of the People who are watching us right now are thinking, you know, the same thing, how inspiring that your story is. So I so I would assume then that your mom's name is Veronica. Is that is that her name? All right. And what's her full name? Veronica Lakin or is he 
Veronica Salang sang the Kingdom. Oh, okay. Salang sang is a, I thought it was, that's Kapampangan. Dito Charlie Kapati's Kapampangan also. Is that Kapampangan? Dito Charlie. <laughs> I think Salang Sang is Kapampanga, but I'm not. That's, so I think during the wars, they migrated to Makati, but I think originally there's, they're from Pampanga. They're from Kapampanga. Oh, okay. All right. So we've got Kathy Ulanday Bayaka. She sent heart. Huh. <laughs> Kathy, do you know her? Do you know her? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, All right. Thanks, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> and then Soledad Montilla, Montilla. That's Montilla. Listening from the Philippines. And then John Fong says, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> With exclamation points, two exclamation points. And then she's giving you a fist bump right there. <laughs> um, and then Tony and Ida Viste, they said hi. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us this evening. So, okay, so how was the trip like? You went to the Philippines in November. Was that yep. the uh, was that the um, what is it the inaugural like the turnover or is that or it was a turnover? It was a turnover ceremony. Oh, awesome! So, tell us about that. It was great. It was uh, so. Um, I showed. I landed the day before. Drove straight up there the day after, uh, met with Dan and Luis at the Enchanted Farm. And again, they're giving me a bit of the tour of the land and how everything works. And then towards the end, we started getting closer and closer to the actual village. And I could kind of kind of see the colorful buildings and I could see the homes. Um, and then I arrived and then they had a great ceremony. Everyone's there. Everyone's there to greet me, welcome me. Um, just say how thankful they are, just gonna, again, getting to meet the people themselves. Um, yeah, they said, a, a, we said a prayer. They said in very, very nice words. I got to meet each and every one of the families. So they kind of introduced themselves. Um, I said a few things and then I kind of started winning, going into people's homes. So it was great. I was able to kind of go into some of the homes, talk to them, talk about the pictures on the wall, see who their kids are, mm -hmm. tell a little from, uh, my, uh, my uh, uh not so great Tagalog but from they were able to understand my English so we were able to share stories about each other's families so it was it was really great um one of the stories that I found myself telling with each of them was again just how important a home was just having a home and I found myself telling the story of how me me and my mom never stayed in the same house for very long we were we were the families that there's times we would need to an extra room so when you had that cousin or relative that would stay in your house because they needed a place to stay for a while that was me and my mom or we had to go from apartment to apartment because uh for whatever reason so the idea of having a place you didn't that you can call your home we were able to instantly connect um and uh, uh that we have i was able to tell them i know how it feels so they were very grateful emotional um but yeah, all those good things. It was it was one of the highlights of my life for sure. Wow, that's wonderful. Did you when they were building the village? So they started building the village in 2019. You said we started talking about it, and then they probably started in 2020, 2021. Hmm. So it took about a good year, year and a half. So while they were building it, you you did visit. You didn't see it like rise. Right? So, so it was from concept to when you visited, you saw all these colorful homes. So that must be amazing. Like from, from the discussion and you see, you actually see, you know, people living in those homes and, you know, now having an address, like you said. Yeah, it was great. I mean, throughout the process, uh, GK was great. They would send me photos. It was a lot of the people. And again, again part of the stories they would tell me would be, what after work wherever they would all come and start helping build so a lot of the homes that were built were built by the the homeowners themselves the uh, uh um they would come after work or whatever it is lend a hand so they all a lot of it was built by them and uh there was a story of a a young um, um a young boy he would tell he just kind of came up to me and said they call me Kuya mark because obviously i'm not i'm not too old so i take that as a compliment um, I was the I was I was probably more in the age range of the parents, 
But some of the kids, older teenagers, they would come up to me and they would tell me that, yeah, I helped build this, I helped build that. So they take a lot of pride in these homes that they're living in. It's not just uh, they, they, they got their hands dirty as well. So at equity, right? They, they, they really contribute to, um, to, to the process, right? So that, I, that's one thing too that I love about GK. It's not DOLA. This isn't, you know, this is a charity. This isn't, this is really partnership of building, you know, and a, a new nation that is free of, you know, of poverty, right? Of, you know, it's really a, a, a was it like a collaboration to end poverty, right? In, in the Philippines. And, you know, so, you know, like maybe on the surface, you think, you know, people will think it's charity because you're giving money and you're donating and stuff like that. But because, you know, the, uh, the people who benefit or who end up living in the homes also put in their own share, right? Contribute to the process. Then it becomes some uh, more collaborative, you know, process, right? To, to uh, you know, to, to again, you know, end, end, end poverty. All right, so how many homes are there in the village? There were 20, so 20 families, 20 families benefited. That's awesome. And so, so 20, you know, 20 families. Okay, well, we have another, uh, another message here from Steph, LAQ. I don't know. Maybe Steph's looking. <laughs> yeah, that's my. Oh, yeah, that's, that's your mom. She, she says, love you, daddy. So proud of you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, of course, you know, that's not, you know, it's, it can, the 20 homes is not, you know, it's not uh, inexpensive. I mean, it is, if you think about it, for each home, for that amount of money, you can actually change the life of one family, right? But we're talking about 20 homes, right? Um, so, did you, uh, how did you, uh, you know, raise the funds to, you know, to, to build that village? Was, was it all like personal funds? Was it with the help of, you know, friends and family? Who would you, you know, who's, who's part, who were part of this, you know, of this process? Before you answer that, I feel like the boya bunda on a startup or something. Before you answer that, no, you have a message from Raymond Benas. So proud of you, Mark. I know you've honored your mom and she's smiling in heaven right now. Thank you for that. So. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Ray. That's my brother-in-law. Awesome. All right, cool. So was it, was it, you know, how did you, how were you able to raise that amount of money to, you know, to fund that, the, the, that project? It, it did come from personal funds, but what helped a lot was uh, the company I worked for was, it was matching. Okay. So out of all of it, they covered half, I covered half. Um, so they matched my contribution, which allowed me to uh, finance and cover the whole cost of an entire village. That's awesome. That's that's amazing. Yeah. So we, the, some companies are matching. My my yeah. company also matches. I, I work for. I think I can mention it <laughs> because it's out there. there it's one of the benefits uh, with Carrier. I work with with uh, Carrier, and they also match dollar for dollar. Yeah. So so for you out there who are thinking about maybe taking on a you know a project with Gawad Kalina Gawad Kalina USA, maybe check with your own employer and see if they have a matching program right um with uh and then check if gk one world foundation is um, is in the list of charities or nonprofit that they support and if it's not elect <laughs> elect gk one world i'm i'm helping you through that process so there's really no excuse not to you know not to do it and it doesn't it doesn't have to be you know a whole village right whatever it is that you can, you know, you can take on whatever project you can take on. We have a lot of programs that you can check out. Um, if you log on to gk-usa.org, you will find the different programs that we support and, you know, that, that maybe your own company can support as well uh, by way of matching donations. All right, we have a message from Marisol Villanueva. Your mom, Veronica, is smiling from heaven, Mark. She had the same name. As the woman who showed compassion, wiping Jesus's face, and you are showing that same love. Oh, I love that. So that is true. Yep. All right. So what? So going forward, now that you, you know, you have the the village, you know, um, and they you've turned over the homes to the to those twenty families whose lives is forever changed. How did that change your life? 
I think just the connection. Uh, I wanted to go there, be there in person to let them let them know that there is someone who's thinking about them, who cares about them. And but it changed me. Now it can again for me, it's just kind of a motivation that there's those that count on me and or at least I can help inspire or help continue helping. So it, it adds to a little bit of motivation to keep trying to help as many people as I can. And so going forward, what's, um, what kind of involvement do you see yourself continuing to be involved with, with Gullah Green? Obviously, now that you have a village, <laughs> you know, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, GK village builders continue to be involved in the community that they help, you know, uh, raise, basically, right? Because that's a new community now that uh, the 20 families uh, live from, you know, from uh, the, the from the poor, you know, uh, situation they had before. So now you really have the new community where you know, they can be proud of their homes, right? And they're provided with the opportunity, livelihood and, and all that stuff. So what what do we look forward to you, you know, uh, your involvement in the future? Um, probably most likely the ideas we have is kind of helping out the kids when it comes to education and, and, and kind of through, um, um, providing help in that sense. One of the other charities I was kind of able to visit when I was out there was just a, this, uh, small organization of kids I was sponsoring. And that was a great experience because I was able to help kids from, elementary to really college kind of that advanced kind of a learning area where financially they couldn't afford it and it doesn't cost too much from from my end so I love that idea of kind of helping them through um, that idea so a lot of me and my family are our passion is education so mm -hmm. going to see the village seeing all those little kids and seeing their pictures on the wall from from school and things like that that really uh connected me to them saying okay I want to I want to if I can help see you through all the way to as the, as far as through education as uh, you can take yourself you have someone in the U.S. helping you out that'll support you so I think again we're always I think Dan and, and Louis were kind of annoyed I was like oh well what else do they need what else do they need like always trying to come up with that new idea but to me I think that's a, an area of me and my family are really passionate in helping people with is in the education field. Awesome, awesome. And is there uh, is there any final message or anything you'd like to share with you know people who are watching? You have your family here also uh, watching this you know this interview. Anything you want to share with them that you probably haven't shared before about you know this experience with with Gala Community? Um, probably the, the message I think what I kind of when I step back and look at everything, it's it's it's. We have in many ways all been blessed. And I think the message is just don't sit on those blessings and just say how lucky me for what I have um, through my life and with my mom and what have I, we've experienced. We've been blessed. And, and it wasn't because it was anything mir miraculous that just became an opportunity. It was the help. It was a help from this person and that person. So I think the final, the real the message is we are the blessing um and god works through us so i was a recipient of so many blessings of people helping me and my mom through our lives um and we hope to continue that so uh let's be each other's blessing and i think that was the message of the village as well is um no matter how little you think you have there's always something you can find a way to give back and help each other uh grow and and flourish I love that. I love that message. We are the blessing. And a couple more uh, messages here before we, we close from Nelia Benas. So proud of you, Mark. Mare is so blessed to have a son like you. Um, Thanks, from, Mama. That's my mother-in-law. Awesome. Um, from Tony and Ida Viste, Mark, we are so happy with your accomplishments. You have such a big heart. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, yes, we are the blessing and we always send this show with saying be blessed and be a blessing to others with that. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you for for your support and always watching us every you know, every month, every last Thursday of the month here on Quantum GK. Uh, we hope that you continue to support Gawad Kalinga 
And uh, we will always be happy to share Gawad Kalinga stories. We are never lacking of, Gaw of great Gawad Kalinga stories and Mark Lakin's story and his mom, Veronica's story is just one amazing example of, you know, of the many uh, Jiki Hope stories that we have. So Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks for watching. Good night. Be blessed and be a blessing to others. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.